you know, what you decide, what you decide about yourself in your mind really comes to fruition materially down the road. Welcome to The Art of Success, episode 002. My name is Ebony Jewel Rainford Brent, also known as Ebbs. Feel free just to call me Ebbs. And I'm still buzzing from episode number one. So many people love the Alistair Campbell interview. This guy gave so many insights. And, uh, you know, if you haven't listened to it, it's worth a listen. I mean, this guy really threw down with some amazing information. Uh, just in case you don't know why we're here, so this is the first time you're listening, I am researching for a book on the mindset of successful individuals and how it helps them get to the pinnacle of success. And I wanted to share the journey along the way rather than sort of just keeping those interviews to myself. I thought it'd be a nice thing to do is share it and other people can then take away some of the insights, the inspiration, some of the feedback. Today we have another fantastic guest, Chris Akabusi, MBE. I absolutely adore this guy. I mean, he has so much energy. He's got the most amount of wisdom. He has the best laugh in the entire world. Um, and this guy is just great. If you don't know who he is, which I think it might be hard, but just in case, he, this guy has risen to fame through athletics, in particular the 400 meter hurdles and the 400 meter relay. And he's amassed three Olympic medals. He has world, European and Commonwealth titles and also has become a TV personality. You may remember him presenting Record Breakers and Channel 4's Big Breakfast. Now he runs his own company and he's also a philanthropist. So this guy has done it all. In my book, he's done it all and he just shares so much great stuff. Some things it might be worth pointing out ahead of the interview that you might want to listen out for. One is how he talks about how we see ourselves in our mind determines our future. He talks about how we can make ourselves an asset, like think of ourselves as an asset. And then also, finally, which I thought was a fascinating take about learning the rules of engagement in our environments to be successful. I could del delve into it, but I want you to hear the story and then I'll sum up at the end. Get stuck in. This is a brilliant episode. Listen on your walk to work or, uh, you know, work out or whatever you're doing. And um, just a quick reminder as well. These episodes are going to be every other Sunday. I said bi-weekly, which bi-weekly has two meanings. So I just wanted to make it clear. Every other Sunday released at 6 a.m. So do tune in. And if you're listening on iTunes and you like it, please subscribe. If you're on SoundCloud, please give it a follow. And of course, I can get in touch on social media or my website. But on Twitter, I'm at EJ Rainford Brent. And you can get in touch through my website. Sit back and enjoy. Hello, okay. Chris. First of all, uh, what a lovely day we've got. We're out in Woburn at the moment, your yeah. favourite golf course. Yeah, it's fabulous here. Yeah. It's a lovely, lovely piece of sanctuary. I come up here just to relax, play a little bit of golf and have some meetings with delightful people like you. <laughs> How's the golf, by the way? Well, I was just saying to the general manager here, I, I, I came back from uh, Cyprus about three weeks ago and I had the best run of golf ever. Um, I'm, I'm a 19 handicap, but that means on a golf course I'll get 19 extra shots. So my number to score is, is 91, and that says I'm, I'm part on the course because mm. it's normally 72 par straight course. Well, when I was out in Cyprus, I had four rounds where I went 91, 82... 83 oh, nice. 90 yeah and the guys are calling me the band of history <laughs> and they were just not having it they were just not having it and uh, and, and I, I, it's just one of those periods where I don't know what I was doing right but I was doing it right it clicked it started to happen I, for I was, you I, I, I just saw it I could just see it and then, and then I came back here had a couple of goes in the bunker they went out around 105 <laughs> so it just <laughs> come the uh, come down the rule. so I don't know you know, I mean I, I look you know there's a great book out that says golf is not a game of perfect. You don't play golf to be perfect, mm. you know. And, and I, I mean, 105 is just so ugly. And uh, there's, there's, I've got a nickname at the golf course. It's Chris Hackaboosie. <laughs> ha Hackaboosie was back. You're getting around however. <laughs> I, do you remember talking about that? I came and played at one of your golf days. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. And you won. Oh, yeah, we won. But I don't know if you remember. I almost hit you because this was the days when I first started playing golf. I didn't know the difference between my distance of my clubs. So um, you were going off one other hole and I'd picked up, I think it was only like one of those sort of par, par three, 90 yards, 100 yards. 
cards mm. and I picked up like my seven <laughs> and I nailed it like and all of a sudden like it was one bounce and I think people turned around and I was like oh my god this is so embarrassing so anyway right um, well, I'm, so, I'm assuming you because you know what we generally find is like hockey players and cricketers mm. do turn out to be good golfers but we slice I slice it though do that, you? yeah do you? It's, I think it's the cricket technique kind of I end up going into out a little bit I need right, to work on the right. Yeah. Right, so okay, okay. Well, we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Well, sure. <laughs> right. Let's talk today. So, thank you yeah. so much, obviously, for Pleasure. coming on the podcast. Um, so, I wanted to talk to you about success, and I mean, you've had success. I've got you. I'm going to read your CV roughly before we start, okay. just to kind of look at some of the things that you've achieved to remind you, even though you know. Mm. Um, I've got that. Obviously, you joined the army in '75, which I wanted to talk to you about the army. But you've gone on, um, obviously, into athletics. Started as 400 meter meters and then the hurdles obviously and so you won i'd say your highest moment most probably gold 1990 yeah, in the european championships yeah. uh, you you beat um david, david Henry's 22 year old that's amazing year old and that that really was amazing because when he set it it was an olympic record yeah for 22 years so 22 you, years, you yeah. that was a british record and then 1991 uh you you clinched the gold from the americans in the world championships mm. Three Olympic medals you've got, World European Championships. Obviously, you've got your MBE. Yeah, I mean, that is cool. Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a what honour. And uh, so, sometimes I, I even now, you know, th- sort of 30, 30 years on, I'm amazed that it really happened to me. Mm. You know, that I'm one of the citizens that something like that has happened to. Because, um, well, I, I'm sure we'll come to my story, but, mm. you know, I was brought up in the children's home and joined the army. And all of a sudden, you know, you're a member of the British Empire, which I know it's a little bit a, a, a crap. Old fashioned, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but no, for me, it does mean something. You know, mm. I'm very British in that respect. It is well, and and then also, and the other bit I want to talk about is not just that, but you've gone on, you've been studying an MBA, you've built your own company, you've worked in TV. Yeah. Um, so you've, for me, you've done it all. You've achieved success. Do you feel successful? So that's the first question. Um, I, th- I think success is. I mean, I did, when I when I'm asked yeah. to define what success is. I define success as the life that you lead, the lessons that you learn, and the legacy you leave. So, in that respect, um, I will never know until the day I die because my success won't be defined by myself. It will be defined by those who outlive me. Because yeah. um, legacy is a very important thing. You, you know, we we are born alone and we die alone. Mm. And from an existential point of view, you're not, you're not asked to be born in this world. You're, 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 you're just chucked into this world. But chucked in this world that we are. And then, then we've got to work out what it means to be in this world. And so, you know, I've worked out the format and the formula and the people that I live with and I try to exist in the world that I found myself thrown into and then to connect with other people because I've been chucked into this world alone but I'm not on my own I see other people then you work out how you relate with those sort of people and then you've got to make a name for yourself amongst mm. the people that you find yourself and uh, you know I've been very fortunate I've been able to do that I've been able to make an impression in the world that I found myself in and yeah as I, as I live this work, life I, I've learnt lessons that I pass on to people around me but a question that I have for myself is what will the legacy be for those who outlive me? Mm-hmm. And in particular, you know, I'm thinking about my close family, um, the, the, the children that I've, that I've had and that I have and that I bequeath everything to. What's the legacy that I leave? Not just materiality, but the name that I've left them with. You know, what, what that, what's that name Akabusa going mm-hmm. to mean? When I'm no longer there, what are people going to say to them about their old man? And is it going to be stuff that makes them hide their head and, and duck in shame? And so that's why it's very difficult to talk about success when you're still here. Mm. Because there's been many, many people who were s- successful at one moment in time. And then just the incident brings it all tumbling down. And I could name names. I mean, you think of there was a sir who, well, I won't even name his name. Because <laughs> you, know, but you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was a real big shot mm. when he was alive. And he, he died with his name intact. He died of his name is Tad. But anybody that his offspring will be embarrassed to carry that name. And so that's what I mean. And you know, I've got none of those colleagues. I've got none of those colleagues. <laughs> any, uh, any stories yeah. to come out, Chris? <laughs> let's make it let's, let's bring them yeah. out. <laughs> most, no, but, but but I am aware that when it comes to success and about the legacy part, that 
really happens when you die. Mm, interesting, interesting. Okay, so you alluded to it earlier. When you, if you look back now to when you were a kid and you you, you moved into care and had to deal with the, the being growing up in a children's home, going into the army, would you have ever imagined at that point you would have gone on to achieve what you have? Not really. Again, when I was a young boy, um, I mean, the first thing to say is that I, I, I'm born and bred in the United Kingdom. My parents are from Nigeria, and um, they were students. And um, you know, for them, they were coming to this the, the, the land of milk and honey. They were coming to the United Kingdom, and they were really looking forward to be educated. But also, what they wanted to do is for their children to be educated in the United Kingdom. And so, when they went back to Nigeria when I was four, they left me here. I stayed with foster people, foster foster care, some good ones, some bad ones. Um, but the upshot was that seven years after leaving the country, they went. They were found themselves in the civil war, which meant that I found myself in the children's home. And really, in the children's home, I was really surviving. I mean, I, I, I cried a lot when I was a little boy because I missed my mum. And um, I cried from the time I was four to the time I was 12. And then when I got to 12, I realised there's no point in crying that your mum wasn't coming. So, you know, I really saw myself as, a, as, a, as an abandoned kid, really, and I didn't know who I was. Mm. I didn't know what to make of my life. You know, I had all of this residue in my, in my mind of what my, my parents had told me I was, what I was supposed to be. You know, I was going to be, I was going to be a lawyer, I was going to be a doctor, I was going to be a contributor to the country. And then here I am, got, I've got no foot, no foundation, no home, no mum, no, no dad. And so I was a little bit confused. And then I got to 12. And I was a little bit, I mean, I've always been a bit, 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 always been verbose, I've always liked to talk. But I used to talk in the wrong moments at the wrong time and get myself into trouble. And I just decided, I literally decided to be a clown. I decided, okay, there's no point crying, no point being upset, mm. get on with life, get on with people. And so I had to find my way in the community that I was in. And then what I found was that at school, people loved it when I messed about. Mm. And when I say people loved it, the other boys and girls. They, and, and I wanted to be friends with everybody and so if I flick pellets at teachers and hit teachers with pellets and then I'd get the cane and everyone would go Acapulco I was really brave I was really funny did you see what he did in class did you see he stood on the, t- <laughs> he stood on the table and he told the teacher to do one you know in, 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 in more colloquial language you know and they but I didn't realise they were really they were laughing at me I didn't realise that at the time I just thought I'm getting on yeah. people love it and so you know, I, I, I got myself through school I didn't get any qualifications when I left school um, and then I decided to leave school to join the army uh, and again I only joined the army so what are you 16, 17 I'm 16 and 16. a half years of age now I've managed to get my way through school how I didn't get expelled I don't know I mean you know again what, what you don't realise when you are at school is that the powers that be whether the heads at school and the heads at the children's home they're having discussions and, and, they, and they are discounting mm your actions due to the environment in which you come from mm. and, 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 and me I went to school a lot of the other kids didn't go to school from the children's home didn't go to school so I now got a lot of discount therapy um, so I joined I left the children's home at six and a half left the school at six and a half I joined the army and that was the moment of my growth really what changed so you know what you decide what you decide about yourself in your mind really come to fruition materially down the road so I wanted to be a clown at school and I became a clown and left school with no qualifications but when I joined the army I had a different mentality don't know why first of all I think I was fed up of being a clown and my name Keezy was synonymous with being a clown and I remember when I jumped on the train from um, King's Cross to um, Newcastle where I was joining the army I changed my name and decided I was going to be Chris and Chris was 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 standing for progress and I wanted to progress and I wanted to belong and we joined the army we, you, you get all your kit and the very first thing is you go on the parade square and on the parade square there was 800 other young boys and the parade sergeant said this there were 800 boys in this parade square and most of you are not fit enough to be in this army mm. and over the next 28 weeks we're going to weed out those guys you were not fit enough to be in the army and we're going to send you back home to mum and for me that was a challenge he didn't know he was talking to me he was talking to everybody but those words were direct to me 
you're not good enough to be here. I don't want you here. I'm sending you back home to mum. I said, mate, I'm not going home. Mm. And I took a lot of feces there. I, t- I really stuck my nose to it. I worked hard. I, you know, I did all the drill. I took all the discipline. I made sure that I ironed my dress. I bored my boots. I was on parade five minutes before everybody else. And I really worked hard. For the first time in my life, I applied myself to something. So that was the one side. And that was very dutiful and very logical. But on the other side, I was to meet somebody who was to really impact my life. His name is Sergeant McKenzie. He was a troop sergeant, but he was also a sports officer, athletics officer, and he used to do all the athletics. And I, and I, and I, I met him and I got myself a little bit fit and I started training with him. And he started telling me about his time as an army athlete and um, it got, really encouraged me about that. And then he invited me around his home and he showed me about the army athletic junior championships. He developed a training program. He bought me a very first set of athletic spikes. And before I knew it, I was down at older shop representing uh, the Junior Signal Wing at the Army Junior Championships and I won the 400. Out of nowhere, just... I, I, well, just, just 28 weeks training. I went down to Aldershot and, and, I, and what I loved about it was that I was now getting recognised mm. for doing something good. Positive. Positive, you know. Are you known, you're known as Chris at this point as uh, well. Yeah, I was known as I was known as Chris. Yeah, I was now Chris. Mm-hmm. No one knew Keezy. Mm-hmm. I was now Chris, and with Chris Akabusi, the Army Flyer. Yeah. Chris Akabusi wins the Army Junior Championships. Chris Akabusi does it again. Mm-hmm. Chris Akabusi you represents the Army. Yourself. Totally. In a space of a year, I turned myself around. I turned myself. Hey, mate. I, I got a little. So I, I we got like, some mates. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello, mate. Are you alright? Are these yeah. your uh, golf buddies? These are my golf buddies, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 exactly, yeah. They're, 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 they're They've okay. got a drink in there, Yeah, yeah, they'll be... <laughs> so I, t- I completely turned myself around. Mm. And, 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 and the way I saw myself, it's really important, the way that I saw myself had changed and the way the environment saw me had changed. And then you get this reverberation because they began to affirm the new kid that was on the block. They began to affirm me as a person that I wanted to become, mm. which was this winner this champion, this guy that actually contributes to the community, that, that, that is a champion for the community. And so that was it. All of a sudden, the army was saying, so 20 weeks, 28 weeks later, I'm one of the 400 people that stays in the army. 400 people have been weeded out. I've now got been cat badged and I go on to wow. trade training. So that was a big tick. I'm now going to become a tradesman. So when you join, you join as a junior signalman. First thing is, you, 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 the first thing is you, you learn basic training is about infantry. It's about understanding weaponry. It's about it's about um, you know, nuclear warfare. It's about education. It's about drill. And then after those first 28 weeks, you go away and you learn a trade. And I was going to be a data telegraphist. Mm. And, like, but, but, and if they send you to do a trade, that means you've been accepted in the army. And so you get a pass and parade as you become, you go from a junior signals junior signals into the army and that was a big tick and then I was the army junior champion another big tick and I was on my way wow that's fast what the army itself because I mean I've, I've never been in it but I've actually met a lot of people who've gone on to be very successful who've gone through that environment what's that what did that environment teach you I guess and there might be some good there might be some bad what did yeah. you learn from that environment so what, what I know from you Abby mm. you would have been fantastic in the army because you, you, got, you got the right mentality um, so I mean my, the army I'm talking about now is the army I joined in 1975 and I left in 1990. The army's changed a lot and I'd like to do a story in the army one day. But the army that I, I joined in 1975, it's, it, it wasn't PC. Um, now, look, if you joined the army and you stayed the course, you were one of their own and the boys would die for you. Mm. And you would die for the boys. So, so, so I knew that. And just like very much in sport, you know, you get that camaraderie. So I knew that I was accepted as one of the boys. But to be accepted, I accepted stuff that I wouldn't want my child to accept today. What do I mean by that? I, this might come to me as a shock. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have guessed, Chris. <laughs> I would so, never yeah, have yeah. guessed. <laughs> now, now, the thing is, is that, is that, is, is that there was a... When I say real difference, uh, internally, you know, there's, a, there's a real difference the way people saw you. So the way you were treated, I mean, the names you'd get called. And, you know, you, 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 you would get called names, not necessarily in anger, because then you'd have, a, you'd have a barn if it was in anger. But, I mean... Part and parcel of connecting with a community is people pushing boundaries and they want to find out about you and what you can take and what you can't take. You know, and, and so, you know, you get, I mean, I mean, I can't even say some of the things you, 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 you'd get called. 
but in a sense of banter. Mm. You know, this this is all banter, and you you know you're one of us, and you, you know you know I don't like black people, but you're all right, mate. You know you're all right, mate. You're one of us. You know all that sort of stuff. And so you know you took a lot, you took a lot of abuse. I mean, you give as good as you, you know you give as good as you, good as you get. But I used to, and what what I realise now is, if you're in a minority, then when the the majority uh, poke fun at you and actually point out that you are very very different because of the colour of your skin or the makeup of your lips or, the, or your type of hair or or the, the spread of your nose, actually it's very threatening because really. You want to belong, mm. and what they're saying is all the reasons why you don't belong. And so when they say, "Yeah, but I don't mind if you call me chalky or, or honky," or "Yeah, yeah, but that got your goals," because all I'm saying is you belong. I'm saying you're one of a thousand black guys in, or, or white guys in this in this battalion, and you belong. You're saying I'm one of ten black guys in there. You don't belong. Mm. And so, so that's the problem is that when people start, you know, calling you Negro or Sambo or Wog. All, I mean, these are terms that, that my, my kids today don't even know. Mm, mm. But these were terms that were, were regular back in the day. And um, so you have to deal with that. Now, OK, that's on the one side when people are doing that, you know, you're in the barracks and all that sort of stuff. But also, you know, when I talk about... I, I, I transferred from the Royal Signals into the Army Physical Training Corps. Now, that transition is an is a 18-month period with nine months in old shot. I took some serious abuse... Not from the other soldiers that were trying to get into the corps, but from the people that were assessing me to get into the corps. Wow, wow. So, you know, I, I would take some serious abuse from those sort of people. And I remember one guy, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to call him out, because he was an old man, and he was old school. And he thought it was right. And in my lesson plan, so I, 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 mean, I can't even tell, but it was, it was a sport. A sport that I was very, very good at. And a sport that I knew inside out. I knew, I knew, I knew the detail. I knew the lesson plans. And in fact, all the other students would come to me to write their lesson plan, to prepare it for them. And a couple of lads, they got, they got A's off my lesson plan. And I got a C. And I couldn't understand why I got a C. Mm. And then he, said, then he just said to me, well, you're a derogatory word for the Negro. Wow. You're a Negro, what do you expect? Wow. And, and he said that, and I thought, this guy's assessing me. What chance have I got? Well, I took it on the chin. Because, because, you, because you, as a soldier, you just, you've just you got to take it on the screen. Yeah, but there's the something in that, because not everybody, I mean, I'm not saying everybody should have to, but not everybody would be able to withstand and have the resilience to keep going, keep focused on your goals, despite all these right. issues. So talk to me about that. Well, well so, 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 but so, so, Abby, this, but this, to be Fair to him, this is what he was saying. He was saying that, look, part of the role as we get you to Minnesota is, is to make sure that you are resilient enough mm. to take all sorts of feces when you go from here to your unit. Because you're now going to be, you're going to be now, you're going to go from here as a full screw, a corporal, to a sergeant, and you're going to be in charge of a thousand men, and you're going to get a lot of abuse. And if you're one of those guys who's got a chip on both shoulders and starts crapping at the, at the, at the first... So, of challenges yeah, challenge, yeah. yeah. You know, you're not right for us. So, so, so I get that. But the thing is, this look, 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 Abby, in, in life, as I said earlier on, you're thrown into this world, and you're thrown in alone, and you got to get on with it. You know, the, you know, all this are my rights, my rights. My pet, my pets come from Africa, and in the United Kingdom, you have got rights. We are given rights because our society, our tribe here, in this, we agree a, a code of contact which give you some sort of rights, which I think are very, very thin. I think that that the, the, the civil rights in the United Kingdom are, is very, very thin. You don't need to dig very deep, and you get into the real muck and bullets, right? But you go to my country, you're of origin in Nigeria. You ain't got no rights. You can't, you can't stop. You can't say to a policeman when he's beating you, giving you lashes. <laughs> what about my rights? What about my rights? When you get stopped on the road by custom officials and they're dragging you out of their car and they're strip searching you and they're saying, "Bring out your money, bring out your money." You've got no rights, and you and you learn pretty quickly this idea when you're in some like Nigeria, which I've I mean I've stopped going recently because of they now kidnap people and they kill people. I don't, <laughs> well, I don't, I, I, that's a reason. To yeah, not I, don't, go. I, don't, I don't fancy that. <laughs> I don't but, either. But but prior to that, I, I used to go every year, and you realise actually. The world is a. The world 
of men is a dangerous place and nature can be red in tooth and claw. And then as a human being, you've got to connect with the soul of a human being. You've got to connect with that person and you've got to negotiate your rights by the conversation that you have. Now, that's a very brutal way of seeing it when I saw it in Nigeria. But I've learned, okay, that's how it is in Nigeria. It's red and tooth and claw. But actually, you know what? It's not much different here in the United Kingdom. It's much more subtle. Mm. You've got to negotiate your way. You've got to understand, well, what's the rules of this game? Who are the power burgers in, 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 this, in, this, in this game? You know, how do I become non-threatening? How do I become actually a utility, an asset? How do I become part of the asset class in this game? And so it's understanding about assets and liabilities and how you become a real asset in the community forget the selling out business it's about learning how to get on you know you know you know you can't complain if you are out on your ear you're not involved in society no one lets you in if actually you are ignorant to the rules of the game you, when you play sports you when you play sports you learn that there are rules to the game there's a beginning and there's an end there's good things you can do and there's bad things you can do there's ways to win medals and ways not win the medals that's the same in life and so i've learned the rules to the game. And because I've learned, learned the rules to the game, now you don't have to take the abuse that I, I took in 1975. I'm not trying to say that. And, in, and we are very fortunate. In 2017, you don't have to take that sort of abuse. Although I do understand, anyone here that's listening that has get, get, get abuse, I do understand that I'm very lucky. I'm, I, I'm above... You know, I don't know how to say it, but you know, you've got to a position now got to where business. you know, Thank you've you very now much. got the credibility and the you, you've now earned your stripes to yeah, an extent. Well done, well done, yeah, well done, well done. But that's it, you know, you know, so I'm not, I'm not on the street. Yeah. Every yeah, now and again, yeah. I'm on the street and I hear a word of, oh, where did that come from? Because I've not heard it for 20 years, mm. but I'm not on the street. So yeah. I, I get it, I've got a different world mm. view. But I'm saying, no one gave me that worldview. You, 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 you've got to fight to get there and be part of, the, part of the tribe. So what's the, if you were to put your finger on the one thing that has made you successful, just the one, we've talked about so many different traits, so many different environments. Mm. What's the one thing, if someone said, nail it down? Uh, I'm an asset, not a liability. <laughs> that is too good, that is too good. That is too good, you need to expand on that. I just, you just said it and I just started rocking in my chair. Hit me, hit me, this is exciting. Well, so, so, all of us are born with gifts, talents and abilities, right? And you can use them for good or use them for bad. You can look up at the positive stuff and look down at the negative stuff. In my community, GBPLC, I've looked at my gifts, my talents, skills and abilities and I've said, how are they an asset to the production of the gross domestic product in this country? How am I an asset? How can other people in the country... So, for example, here, you know, Ebby says, I'm running a series, I want to have notable people in United Kingdom have done so. so. So how can I be an asset to your programme? Mm. How can I give and therefore receive more? And so it's that, it's looking at how, how are my skills, gifts, talents, so, so, so okay, I'm gregarious, I'm excitable, I'm enthusiastic, I've got an intellect, I've got insights. How do I give that to the community to be an asset and not use it as a liability? And that's it. That's that's what because I, I can use my gifts to be a bad boy. You know, the kid in the classroom at twelve was a liability. Mr. Moses, when he's chalking up his mathematical equations, pi pi squared, and I'm flicking past him, I'm a liability to him. Now I wouldn't be a liability. I'd be an asset to facilitate other people's learning in the class. So it's that is what I mean. It's asking all the time, how can I be an asset so that things work? The, the, the army says that we're a massive machine and you're a small cog. So to be an asset, that cog has got to go in the right way to make the machine work. If it's a liability, the machine screws, chews it up and spits it out again. I don't want to be, I don't want to be spewed out again. Mm. So it's that is what I, what I mean. That's fascinating. You've maybe you've just given me a whole chapter in a book that's going to be called <laughs> Asset or Liability. I love it. Um, okay, talk to me about mindset. And you've got, you know, you've got kids as well. I've met of uh, Shakira um, and Ashanti, who are lovely ladies. How, what, what do you teach about mindset? You also do a lot of speaking, and your business is all yeah. around performance. What do you teach about mindset? Okay, so uh, one thing is to know that the past is for reference, not for residence. So I try to encourage my children and, um, and people that I speak to not to live in the past. We can't deny our past without living it. And there's a great book by a woman called Mary Aftil, which is, which is and it's an old book now. I, mean, I, I read it about 15, 20 years ago. It's called The Story of Your Life. And what basically it says is that we build a narrative 
a wee bit of narrative of life and there are things that happen to you but it's not the ha what happens to you that matters what you make of what happens to you that counts and it's how you take out what happens to you and the emotional the emotion you, you pay into it and the spin you put on it that actually builds your future so I'm saying look into your past and take out those facets of your past that can build your preferred and better future I can major on the fact I was abandoned at four, I'm a kid in the children's home, and I'm a naughty boy. And I can mention that fact, and I can actually be a gang leader, I can be a lookout, I can be a, a mastermind, and I can do all sorts of stupid stuff. And I can be a liability to the community, and I can be locked up for 30 years before I read the key. All right? And I can blame it on my mum. No one loved me, and I didn't get mentoring from my father. Or I can say, I was, I was introduced to diversity at a really early age. In my children's home, I met people from all sorts of, met people from all sorts of walks, lives, colours, creeds, orientations. I learned that I am unique and I'm special. I joined the army and I got mentored. In that mentoring, I became into athletics. I'm a world-class athlete. I recognise that when I put my mind to something, I can deliver. All I need to do is dream big, take action, and play with the people that come into your life. Because once you're dreaming big, and you're taking action, and you're talking positively, people come into your life because they recognise their dream in it too and so that's the clue to the next bit so pass this reference off a residence take out the best bits then dream big of that preferred future and once you begin to dream of that future take massive action today and play with the people that come into your life today and you will be successful stuff begins to happen because that's the way the world works because you know what you're in a world of 7.5 billion people but also be just been chucked into this world. <laughs> They've just been chucked in. There's very few people who live more than 100 years. So let's just get it right. Just, just, get it right. Just, just, think, just think about this. You are sitting on a rock, all right, that's spinning on its axis around a massive globe of fire in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. And everybody that's on this world with you have been here for less than 100 years. There's billions of years this rock has been flowing around the sun and everyone here has been here for less than 100 years and so we look for the books and the animals and the rocks and the things that people have written to find out what we should do with our life and then we get on with it get on with it then you get on with the people that are here today this little 100 year time span which is a sliver in the annals of history it's a sliver get on with it and if you are an asset people say let's get on with it and think good things happen if you're a liability, they lock you up with probably the key to you, to, to you, you shuffle off the model mold coil. So it's as simple as that. That's my mindset. I'm here with Abby. Abby's younger than me. I'm ahead of the curve. But let's get on with it. I'm here with these guys who I play golf with. Let's get on with it. Because we ain't got long. I'm 60. Have I got 20 years? Have I got 30 years? I don't know. But I'm gone soon. Get on with it. I love that. Okay, I've got two questions because I know you've got to play no, some you call, golf. No, you but, call, you call, you but call, you yeah, call, yeah. Okay, call, call. so one, talk to me about investing in yourself because you could easily, and I, I've seen a lot of athletes who when they finish, life just drifts, but you've gone on, you've built a business, you've studied your MBA. Yeah. You, you've continually looked to develop yourself. Talk yeah. to me about that. Do you invest in reading? I know you've written books. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so Einstein said, said a, a mind once expanded never never returns to its original dimensions. And that's why I'm saying that you need, you've got to always be co-creating yourself, co-creating yourself. And you do that by having conversations with other people. Now, when you read a book, you're having a conversation with the best minds that have ever lived. So although I'm on earth with, with people who've been around for 100 years, a book allows me access to people who've been around for 1,000 years, 2,000 years. All right? So first thing, read. Read, read. Read in your area of interest. You know, the, the challenge when you go to school is, and they tell you what to read, and the majority of it is boring because it doesn't interest me. But me now, when I, when I read about psychology, philosophy, um, um, phenomenology, when I read about people's biographies, that interests me, and I learn stuff from those people, right? So I read. My MBA was about being with other people who were in, in the area I wanted to be with. I wanted to get into business. I, well, I, never, no, no, no. I was in business. Mm. And I found myself meeting with people, captains of industry. I met in the heads of department. And I didn't understand their world. I talk about my world, but how does my world really transpose into their world? So I did my MBA as a way of understanding their world. I did my, my, my um, coaching course. Mm. 
to meet with people who are in the helping arts, people who actually are coaches, psychologists, um, physiologists, to understand how they mentor people in their life transitions. Because as you've rightly pointed out, I've had many, many transitions. So my area of expertise is life transitions. But I wanted to work with people who, have, who do that professionally. So all the time I'm expanding, learning and developing so that I can actually help my constituents, the people that come to me for help. So that I can actually also understand the world that I live in. Because, you know, there is a saying, I mean, you'll have heard the saying, if a tree falls in the forest, and if a tree falls in the forest and no one is there, does it make a noise? And that's a way of saying, really, that perception and reality, if no one's there to perceive it, does it really happen? So there's lots of things that are happening around, around us that we don't perceive because we've not got the insight, we've not got the knowledge, we've not got the information, we've not got the, not got the logos, not got the data. So the more data you put into yourself, the more you see in this world. So, so right now, you know, I, I can go to a, an art and I could understand impressionist arti artists because I've been introduced to impressionism. But if I'd never understood impressionism, it's just dots on a piece of paper. Mm. So, so it's that, is that you see more of the world by being exposed to more of the world. But by, and you, the more people you meet, the more they show you their view of the world. Because we've been chucked into this world on our own. And you, you can learn from other people. So it's that, it's that. I invest in myself so I can see a wider view of this world. And I can make more sense of this world. And I can enjoy this world while I'm here for this brief three school years and ten or however long it's going to be okay one one question the reason why it links to success is the topic of social mobility has become more interested to me of seeing are we in a society in the uk at the moment that people can progress through society and the reason why i ask is i feel that doing a pro podcast on success i also have to ask the question are we in an environment where success can thrive yeah um I also ask you because you've got your charitable trust and you look at NEETS as well, yeah. young people who are out of education and yeah. um, out of training. Uh, what You're someone who's become socially mobile mm -hmm. and so you've uh, risen. I've done pretty same, well as yeah, well. Um, what advice would you give to those going through your programs or young people who are not... Everything's not in their favour at the moment, yeah. but they want to progress. Yeah. So I would definitely say that if you're born and bred in the UK or have migrated to the UK you are in the land of milk and honey mm. have no doubt that as far as the western world is concerned places like USA UK Germany France it's heaven on earth you know there are vast countries in this world where no matter how talented you are you're going nowhere because the infrastructure mitigates against you but there are rules to engagement mm. yeah so you can definitely get on. You've got to identify who you are and what you've got to offer. You've got... Now, 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 now so I run my charity and there are loads of charities that help people. So I work with people who are 16 to 24 and not in employment education training to make the transition from education to employment. Now, I'm a very small charity so I only run three or four programmes a year. But there are lots of programmes out there to help young people make the transition. So, you know, if you're unemployed or you're not engaged... You can go to your local community, you, and there are, I mean, what we, was great, we've got all, all spectrums of the rainbow. We've got people whose rise and detra is to help people. Mm. Th that's what they live for. You knock on their door, and you say you've got nothing. I mean, someone said to me, I mean, this, 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 I'll go for the suburb to ridiculous. I've got a limited company, one limited company, it's a very new company, and someone said to me, Chris, do you know that the, the programme from, from Virgin, uh, Virgin, and they give limited companies 25 grand if they're in the first two years. You've just got to apply to, you've got to, apply to, mm -hmm. to Virgin. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so you, ding, you, ding. You, ding, ding, exactly. <laughs> so, so obviously you've got to go over your business plan. But so now, okay, that's one end of the spectrum. That's, that, you know, you've, got to, you've got to be there and be robust and have a programme. But you've got that. Or you've got the local uh, drop-in centre. Arrogan, so Arrogan Housing is one of the companies that I work with, Arrogan Housing Association. They've got an Elgin Youth Association where if you're a young kid and you're down there, you can just rock up there yeah, on a Thursday out. night and they'll help you out. We're in a lucky country. We're in a lucky country. And they all, you just turn up. You, can't, you turn up with your trainers. And if you're not got trainers, turn up without your trainers and they'll get you some trainers. And you just turn up and you say, I want to belong. I want to get on the, on, on the ladder. What do I have to do? And they'll, and they'll introduce you to people like myself and my programme and there's many other programmes like me 
education business partnership and they'll get you on your road to success and then you just got to find out the rules of engagement and like you know when you play cricket Ebby, you've got to find out the rules of engagement and once you find out the rules of engagement you've got to play according to the rules I often say in my programs you know guys if you want to be a footballer and let's say you're a Tottenham fan I spit it as I say in the name. <laughs> you're, well, you're West Ham, aren't West you? Ham, yeah. I saw that. I almost thought <laughs> there was success except yeah. to leave. <laughs> if you're a Tottenham fan, right? You're a Tottenham fan and you're a good footballer and Arsenal scout you, you can't go to Arsenal, yeah, I want to play for you, but I want to wear the white, blue and white shirt. No, Arsenal wear red and you've got to wear red. That's the rules of engagement. And that's what I mean. So, so you've got to find out what are the rules of engagement. What do you have to do to belong to the club? And then you play by the rules and use your skills. Now, if you're a good footballer and you turn up for Arsenal, even though you're a Tottenham fan, you play for Arsenal, you get, you're, you're, you're going places. And it's like that all the time. You've got to find out the rules of engagement. If you do that, you will fly if you're committed. And again, I like to say, commitment precedes confirmation. You've got to be committed to the cause. You've got, you've, got, you've got to commit to understand the rules of engagement. Commit to the cause. Work hard. Keep your nose clean. And then the confirmation of your talent and your success will come. It, it's, I don't get it, but it's a simple equation and it works. It's worked for me as a soldier, sportsman, tennis personality, businessman, philanthropist. It's worked for me. That's it. Final question. I'm loving all this, by the way. <laughs> uh, there's a... Five-year-old, and that's a good age for you to, to think of a five-year-old Chris um, that you can give one piece of advice that mm. is going to allow him to go on and achieve success. What's that one bit of advice? Uh, you're okay, mate. You're okay. Because I'm thinking of the five-year-old that's doubting himself. The five-year-old that thinks he doesn't belong. The five-year-old that, that doesn't recognise himself in that community. Uh, you've got to be okay with yourself. And you, you, you've got to believe that you're okay and, and that you are okay it's going to be okay you know at five I wasn't quite sure I belonged in this place because I had, had met Nigerian parents and I was living with foster parents and if I could speak to my father yourself I'd say mate you are okay and you, yeah you are different you, you've got a fat nose you've got fat lips you've got dark skin but you are okay you, you, you know, you, you're, not, you're not unusual, you're not, di- you know, well, of course you are different, but you are okay, and you've got to find that okayness in yourself. So, I, I, don't know, I don't know how you get on in the world if you're not okay. And I've got to know that I'm okay and you're okay, and there's a good book out mm. by Eric Burns, I'm okay, you're okay. And it's that, that, that idea that you, you've got to be okay. Uh, you could be more than okay, but you've got to be okay. Feel okay within yourself. Yeah, feel okay. Not to see the negativity, not to see... You know, people will try to point out that you're not okay because people want what you want. <laughs> you know, what I didn't realise, you see, when I was monkeying around and being an idiot at school and being chucked out, I wasn't getting any of the cake. Those people in class were getting the cake and they passed their exams and they were going on. What You know, you know, if I th- you finish managing, we, we're told at school that you've got to settle down, work hard, pass your, pass your exams so you can get a... Grade, uh, like get a grade a, yeah. and then get a uh, what qualification? Get a qualification and go then get to uni a, or get uni yeah, and then yeah. get a job. Yeah, boom, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, boom. I, was, I was a bit That's slow. A, no, 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 But but you you were taught that you go to school, That's the whole work point hard, of, yeah. get a grade, go to class and get a job. So be under no shadow of a doubt. When you're in class, you're competing with other kids who know that one of us here ain't going to get a job. And it was going to be Akibuza, the clown in the class, who wasn't going to get a job. Mm. So, I want to say to that five-year-old, you're okay and you will get a job. There is a job for you. And it's not sweeping the streets and, and emptying the bins. It is a good job for you if you want it. But you've got to know you're okay. You've got to understand the rules of the game. That's powerful. Chris, thank you so much. You're a legend as always. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously this will be out soon, so uh, it's always great hanging out with you. You, 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 you make me smile and I love your laugh. It cracks Bless me up. You. Bless <laughs> you. Take you care. So end of episode 002. And Chris Akabusi, MBE, absolute legend. And I love spending time with this guy. He's just got so much energy Um, shares so much insight and I took so much away I've actually got pages you can hear it pages and pages of notes because he was unbelievable I think I took three key things away the first is very powerful is about how we decide who we're going to be we decide our self-concept 
how we see ourselves. And that is so powerful because if you see yourself as a success, you will take actions that lead to you becoming successful. And his example of changing his name from Kezi to Chris, it might seem extreme as such, but it really meant that he changed the way he saw himself and he became a winner and a champion. So that was the first thing. I think the second thing was about becoming an asset. And this is, I guess, relating to our outside world. And to do that, to bring that value, to see ourselves almost as our own company, we have to work out what our gifts and talents are to be able to bring them to the world. I mean, if you go into your environment, if you're a sports person, one of the first things you do is work out what your role is within a team or an environment um, and make the best of your gifts and talents. So seeing yourself as an asset is fantastic. I think the last thing that... I most probably think is the most powerful, uh, maybe the most subtle thing. I don't think we're as strategic as we should be at times in life or don't think enough about how to get ahead. And I think very successful people are strategic. And Chris talks so much about learning the rules of engagement, learning the rules of engagement of our environments, um, how to navigate our environments. And they all have their own specific, unique um, rules. Um, you know, and it's really interesting in the early stages, whenever you move into a new job or a new school or a new, you know, university, there's all these unwritten rules that we might not necessarily realise and we've got to learn them, get strategic to help ourselves get ahead. The early days can always be difficult. And, you know, hearing Chris talk about his early days in the army, uh, you know, especially if you don't fit in for whatever reason as well, it can be cha a challenge and you have to develop resilience to get through that early stage that apprenticeship stage and almost earn your stripes but once you've got the rules down once you've established credibility in an environment um, I, I really heard how learning those rules then can allow you to be strategic and thrive in your environment I, I think that was the biggest takeaway for me and it's going to make me think a lot more about the environments and what are these undercurrent rules that I've got to make sure I've learned to make sure I can personally thrive and obviously if you do the same no doubt you will too thanks again I hope you enjoyed it another two weeks and then we'll have a Sunday morning dose of success um, inspiration so many people have got in touch I've been quite surprised actually how many people have engaged people who have listened thank you very much share it of course get in touch via social media and uh, I hope you look forward to the next one thank you Thank you.